Do you know how much water you have used today? Do you know for what purposes you have used it? And maybe even more important, do you know how you have, could have saved water? Today we will talk about this and I will introduce you to smart metering and smart modeling. We will show how these two instruments may help you in understanding the actual water use. Once we understand this, we can look for ways to reduce the water use. This involves both individual citizens and people we may call water use advisors. These are, for example, plumbers, kitchen and bathroom developers, and manufacturers and retailers of water using equipment, like toilets, shower heads, and washing machines. Citizens play an important role in water use. The key to understanding urban water use is to know more about citizens' behavior. First of all, we need to have a closer look at the so-called end use of water. For what purpose is the water used? This could be showering, washing, personal care, etc. You can see them all in this house. All these end users have a more or less routinely character. You flush your toilet after use and take a shower when you wake up, brush your teeth before going to bed, etc. This routinely behavior in combination with the equipment results in the use of water and the production of wastewater, as a matter of fact. One way of getting a better understanding of when end uses takes place and how much this is, is by installing smart meters. Maybe such as this. Uh, a smart metering can be defined in many ways and applied for various reasons. Basically, a smart water meter frequently samples the water flow and stores the measured values electronically. A smart meter can only measure the water flow at the entry point, as you can see. But it doesn't register what end use it serves. The measured values can be used in various ways. For instance, for a feedback loop to the end user, also known as customer or citizen. In that way, he or she can be made aware of the water use. Awareness is the first step in saving water. But what are the possibilities for saving? Showering, for example, is an end use that can be changed. To save water, you could shower less, shower short, or use colder water. But what about the second largest water user, the conventional toilet? The amount of water used for toilet flushing, and most other end users, is fixed. Change of behavior with effect on water use is limited. Literally, nature calls, which cannot be ignored, and the flush is a flush. There is an alternative, though installing another type of equipment, like a low flush toilet, or, concerning another end use, a front-loading washing machine instead of a top-loading one. But what could be the effect of that on the total water use, and consequently the water flows, residence times and velocity in the network? Is it wise to advise on such measures? This is where clever modeling of water use comes in. The Simdayan model is such a clever approach. It models the behavior of people based on socioeconomic data and multiplies this with the water use. And then with mathematical techniques simulating random behavior, you can create these kind of graphs. In this case, for instance, the water use in a residential area. Or you can make patterns of water use for one family or five families or 10 or 20 families even. With this, you can study the effect of equipment change. The beauty of this kind of modeling is that you can generate 500 days of water used with a certain type of equipment, and the next minute, another 500 days with another equipment. And this facilitates the study of the effects of changing the equipment. So there are several ways to influence the water use. Smart metering suggests a direct feedback loop to the consumer, making him or her aware of the effects of their water use behavior. This creates the possibility to change behavior, for instance, less or shorter showering. Clever modeling enables to study the effect of other equipment of water use, which reduces the water use without radical changes in behavior. The question was if you know how you could have saved water. The answer is that you cannot do it alone by changing your behavior. To save water, the role of you, a citizen, and the people behind the equipment is complementary. A more sustainable end use of water should be co-created by individual citizens and the water use advisors, such as plumbers, kitchen bathroom, builders, and equipment manufacturers and retailers. <laughs>